Hey friends, let's talk about setting up your MetaSound. There seems to be a little bit of confusion about how to determine uh, how to set up your MetaSound as a looping sound or a continuous sound or versus a one-shot sound. Um, sometimes you might call it a sustained sound. Um, so the first thing that you want to determine is, hey, is this sound a, a sustained sound, a sound that I play and then it plays continuously until I tell it to stop? Or is it a sound that I play once and I just sort of forget about it? So uh, by default, when you create your, your meta sound source, you'll see that it has implemented an interface called the one shot interface. And you'll see an output uh, node that uh, has a warning on it that says, hey, this is a one shot sound you need to connect this node up. All right. So in meta sounds, they are procedural sounds. That that means that they uh, that the the um, that Unreal has no idea what's going to come out of them. <laughs> they know audio is going to come out, but they don't know what audio is going to come out. So you have to say, hey, this is a uh, one-shot sound or it is a sustaining sound and uh, the way that you do that or the way that you communicate that to the renderer is whether or not you've implemented this interface so if you want it to be treated as a one-shot sound you don't have to do anything and when you add your wave player or whatever else you're going to do just make sure that you are appropriately connecting uh, to the on finished output. That way, the sound effectively communicates to the audio renderer that is done playing. However, if you have a sound that you intend to loop, that you intend to sustain indefinitely, or for some undefined period of time, well, then simply looping your wave player is not going to communicate that information. You have to get rid of this interface. So go over to your interfaces and trash the one-shot interface. So that's the first thing you want to decide. Is this a one-shot sound? Is this a looping sound? Then you want to decide how my, what's the configuration of my output? Am I outputting a mono audio uh, content? Am I outputting stereo uh, content? And in the future, there will be more options. There will be you know quad surround and all that sort of stuff you'll need to go to the meta sound gear and then you'll see the configuration options for this particular meta sound and the output format you can switch to mono to stereo and then other configuration options will show up here um, down the line in the future it's also a good idea to add your name here so this is automatically adds your username as it's read by Unreal. Um, but uh, if you want a specific name to appear here, that's a good idea. And this is going to be useful um, as metadata that uh, eventually will be used by the versioning system. Um, and then the, the last bits that you'll want to sort of set up on your um, meta sound is under the source gear. So select the source gear, and then you'll have all the important um, configuration options, you know, such as um, the the MetaSounds uh, sound class, uh, the its sort of default volume and pitch uh, scalers, uh, any sort of um, attenuation settings that you want applied. And then, of course, your uh, effects path, the uh, insert effects chain, the source effects chain, or um, any sort of bus sends or submix sends, etc. Um, and then, of course, uh, if you're using audio modulation, then you would have uh, modulation um, assignments go here. Uh, Voice management, this is something that people have asked about. So voice management uh, works just like any other sound source, okay? 
Um, and voice management treats sound sources differently if they are looping or one shot, if they're a sustained sound or a one shot sound. So the default uh, voice behavior is to restart the sound source. But if you have a one shot sound that goes out of range or goes to zero volume, it is ejected from the renderer. All right, it's ejected from the renderer. And that's because most one shot sounds are under a second long. And if you can't hear a one shot sound, like it's, it's out of range of the, of the listener, um, then there's no point in playing the sound at all. Uh, because it's unlikely that the user will ever hear it. Um, so it is more rare that you would have a one-shot sound that is very long. Um, exceptions might be dialogue um, or musical stingers, etc. And so if you want a, a one-shot sound... Here, let me add the interface back. If you want a one-shot sound... Let me uh, set this up so it's a little bit... Oops, so it's a little bit cleaner, kind of makes sense. If you want a one-shot sound that um, plays uh, at zero volume, uh, then you want to select play when silent as your virtualization mode, as your voice management mode. And that will render the sound at zero volume. And when it comes back into range, uh, it will sort of just no longer be zero volume, and it will just keep on going from wherever it um, uh, was, basically. Uh, so uh, it, it just keeps playing, basically, when whether you're in range or not. But that takes an extra voice. It's something to think about. You know, that's there is something to an, as an optimization that we don't render sounds automatically outside of your listening range when we don't think you'll be able to hear them. Uh, restart means um, is basically for looping sounds. So when you have a looping sound that goes out of range, right? So let's kill our one shot interface. So now this is a looping sound. And when a looping sound plays out of range, well, then we have a couple of options. You know, we still don't want to render it because it's an optimization to just not render it. Um, so the default behavior is to restart the sound when it comes back into range. Um, another alternative is to just disable the sound. So if maybe you don't want it to come back uh, when it comes back into range. Um, but this is a less likely uh, option. Uh, not to say that, that that wouldn't come up for you, but it's... Uh, I have never wanted to use this particular option myself. Um, play when silent uh, you could be an option. Uh, that way it keeps rendering. So something like uh, diegetic music, say like a radio, uh, that uh, like a radio uh, sound somewhere in the world, you leave zero attenuation range, maybe you still want it to, to render. Uh, because when the player comes back into range, if it starts from the beginning, then it'll be really obvious, right? Uh, and then finally, you want to add whatever concurrency rules um, might dictate part of your, your voice management, and then prioritization rules. And priority rules uh, are very important when especially when you're doing something like play when silent, right? Because when you have a lot of sounds playing, play when silent, it's still a possibility that that sound will get ejected from the render. Um, there is a max number of voices that your, uh, that, that the engine is set up to play um, that will be set on a per platform basis. And that could be, say, 32 voices or 64 voices or something like that. It depends on whatever the capabilities are of your particular platform. So in those cases, if there's a silent sound and there's a bunch of sounds that aren't silent, those sounds that aren't silent might eject the silent sound from the renderer if your max voice count is reached. So that's something to also consider, right? Um, in which case you may want to raise the priority of like, so if this is, let's say this is music, let's say this is uh, 
music and you're 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 going in and out of silence because say you're ducking the the music because of gameplay events or dialogue or whatever uh, but you want the music to keep going along well then you might increase the priority right and so um, you could go as high as uh, 100 that's the max priority um, but then you can also remove the volume scalar as a factor in determining the voice's priority. So if I click this, then it then it's being zero volume will be ignored when it's when it's factored into how important this voice is. Um, so that's something else to uh, think about when you're dealing with play when silent. So those are some of the sort of initial thoughts that you want to sort of that you want to sort of knock out as you set up your your sound source um, and the last uh, the last thing to to uh, check on is your wave assets codec so um, let's say I'm playing this a uh, gunshot sound and this is a one-shot sound because it's just a gunshot right so I'll add the one-shot interface back and when this is done, I want it to communicate that it is done playing. And then the last thing that I want to do is I want to open that wave asset and I want to, to set its asset compression type. Um, and this is this is important. The Bink Audio, the ADPCM, and the PCM are all codecs which support seeking so if I want to randomly set the start time, you know, I could have something like this on next, and I want to randomly adjust the, uh, the start time of the gunshot to give it some variation and um, you know if I play through this maybe uh, cut that in half there we go oops take the loop off it's a one-shot sound So I get a little variation. If that was one of the layers, maybe it'd be the, that'd be a useful uh, variation. But that's only possible because I'm using Bink Audio, ADPCM, or PCM. If I select platform specific, that doesn't guarantee that seeking is uh, is a possibility for that particular codec. So that's the the last thing to sort of to think about when. Um, setting up your uh, meta sound sources i hope this was a useful video thanks <laughs>